somehow. Kolokov looks a little bit tense, maybe. Broad smile on his face there, though. Of the two, Umaha looks a touch looser, but you would expect that, really. Frank Fiaco of Canada with the final instructions. So Holokov in red, Kazakhstan, Umeha, France in the blue. Gold medals so far for Kazakhstan and Japan. Holokov quickly to the center of the ring, looks for that right hand to the body. Flicking that jab up from the waist. Umeha very, very good at just pulling back out of distance. I think the second jab there from the Uzbek did manage to get through. What Umaha does very efficiently is just hinge forward at the waist. He offers that head. It makes it look like it's in range, that his balance is on the front foot, when in fact it's nice and evenly spread. As I said, just hinging forward. He can leave that head in and then just pull it back very, very quick. And he'll need to because Halakhov has got a sharp jab on him. Lead left hand there from Umaha, followed by right. He throws that kind of rapid one-two. Both of those two landed into the second minute almost of the first round. Right hand aimed there by Holokhov. You see him with those with those low gloves, just ready to pounce. There's a good combination. Jab to the body right up top. Landing just a split second after each other. Looking for the uppercut on the inside. And this is a good battle between two fighters who have got excellent reflexes. Good upper body movement. Landing punches here. It's going to be hard, they'll be at an absolute premium. Holokov with a good combination there. And he's dictating terms at the minute. Umaha is fine boxing off the back foot. He will give that ground, he'll concede it voluntarily most of the time. He'll prefer his opponent coming on to him, but you just get the feeling here that Holokov is the one setting the agenda. He's doing more what he wants to do rather than the other way around. Again, the right hand there from Holokov, I don't think quite got through that time just blocked off by by the guard jab lead hand there from the fighter in red just about made it quite square there as he came and Umaha came back in with a combination then look for that long right hand and again look at the upper body movement in there at close quarters it's it's like watching something out of the matrix at times these two just able to tilt back from the waist Employ that lateral movement, which is extremely taxing, physically very, very tiring. Heading towards the final 30 seconds. Referees hardly had to say anything to either of them. Left hand to the body there from Holokov, and he almost gets Umaha in a little bit of a, a headlock. Just bouncing on the balls of the feet, trying to distract with that right hand there, Holokov, and then jabs to the body. Switches stands. I said he maybe looked a little bit tense during the final introductions, but he's been anything but, anything but since the bell has gone. And just catches Umaha again with, with that jab. And that's been the difference between the two in that opening round. He's just managed to, just to find that fractional adjustment of distance and reaction, and Umaha maybe quite hasn't. I think that's a terrific opening round between two expressive boxers. Everything they do is embellished and celebrated. I happen to think the man in red did enough to edge it. But Umaha, with some flashy, eye-catching scoring shots as well. How did the judges see it? Well, Umaha's taken all five cards. So Kalakov not rewarded for his pot shot successes. Umaha, a clean sweep of the first round. In a round where I thought both boxers enjoyed a fair degree of success, as evidenced by the replay sequences we're seeing. I think he's unlucky there, Alokov. I said at the end of the round that I thought he'd that I thought he won that round. That I thought that he was the one really who was who was dictating terms. If either one of them was, it was tight. But I think he's unlucky there not to get anything, and he's trying to come out here more aggressive, looking for that jab. But I think he was confident in what he was doing in round number one. The bootlace has, has come undone. So the Uzbek corner. Just attending to that, just 12 seconds 
into round two. And at the start of the round, he's he's come out he's come out nice and quick, looking to try and throw that one two jab to the body, stiff jab to the body. And there's not quite as much move from now from Holokov. He's looking to sit down on those punches slightly more. Referee just talking to Imahar about keeping that head up. The Frenchman did have success in that opening round. I'm not trying to say that Holokov completely dominated it. Right hand there, right hand lead from Umahart. And there's a nice jab from the Frenchman as well. Just backing up towards the ropes. As I say, he will give that ground voluntarily. That's where he really likes to be. Good left hand to the body there again from Umahar as he just moves off. And then a left hand into the, into the chest. Which is short with the jab, both of them. Right hand there from Umahar. Holokov has changed his approach, has changed his style a bit in this second round on the basis of not having got any of the cards in the first round, I would imagine. And personally, I don't think it's working quite as well for him. He slowed those feet down a bit. The upper body movement has slowed down the touch as well. And as a result, I think Umahar is finding it slightly easier to land on him. So just past the midway point of the round. Jump to the body there from Holokov. Umahar just waving those gloves. A study and concentration there is again, he just creeps back, looking to give himself slightly enough room. <laughs> Elaborate kind of hitch kick there in the center of the ring from Holokov. And that's the kind of thing we haven't really seen in the first couple of minutes of the of the round. Again, this is this is tight. Umaha just standing rock solid in the middle of the ring there. There's that rapid one too. He's got very quick hands. Right hand again there from the Frenchman, a, a kind of rapier-like shot. Remember, Umaha took it with all five judges in that first round. And there are those quick hands again. The French corner. Well, this time it's them who will have to get that boot lace tied. I'm just looking at the Uzbek corner away to our right-hand side. There's a lot of urgency in there. They're looking for the, for the right hand from him, I think, is the communication there. Final 20 seconds of the round. And I do think he needs a good finish to the round here. Holokov. There's the jab from him. But Umahar just working on the on the inside and the referee had given the call to stop Umahar indicating to Holokov that he hadn't really heard it as we go through into the final few seconds right hand off the ropes there from Umahar and I think on the basis of the scoring of the first he did change what he was doing there Holokov and I don't think it worked quite as well for him we'll see with the judges indeed I my impression was that Umahar did enough to take that second round Remember, he took the first round unanimously, and he's taken the second round in the exact same fashion. Credit to Halakov by trying to implement a change after conceding the first round for all of the judges. But he's got a real difficult task now going into the third and final round because he's 20 points to 18 down for all of the scoring judges. And again, Umaha so experienced. The Frenchman... Nothing he hasn't seen at this level of boxing. He's experienced disappointments. Here he's dealing with a 21-year-old phenom. And you just get the sense that, ex that that experience is a crucial advantage in his favor. And he's just managing to pose some questions that the 21-year-old has never experienced before. He's just a very, very clever fighter. Two points up on all five other cards. As mentioned... We do feel that the fighter in red, Holokov, was maybe a bit unfortunate not to get something in the first. But Umaha won that second round and he has his method. He boxes the same way, really, whatever comes at him because it's worked so well for him. As I said, right at the very start of the coverage, he trusts it. And you have to hold your nerve in this sport more than any other, particularly in this three-round format. Yes, you need to make the adjustments, but you don't necessarily need to overreact. I think there was maybe a little bit of inexperience came in there from Holokov in the, in the second round because 
because he got nothing in the first, and there would have been advice from the corner too, but because he got nothing in the first, he did change quite significantly in the second, in the first couple of minutes of it anyway, and I think what he did suited Umaha, but it's hard. If you lose that first round, you're going to think to yourself, well, what I did there didn't work, I need to do something else. And sometimes it can just be a quirk of the scoring almost. So a minute down in, in round three, Holokov just setting his feet there, digging those toes in and trying to plant that left hand to the body. Umaha with a big kind of flighty left on the move and the, the feet clashed and, and down he went. I said it in the first round, but what's been really good about this too is that our man in the middle there, Frank Fiacco, has barely had to say a word. Barely got involved in this at all. It's, it's flowed well this fight midway through the round. Umaha switches those feet quick and then looks to try and throw... A right hand over the top. Good counter, one, two to the body there from Umaha. And again, always got his balance. When he's looking to avoid punches, he's able to throw on the move from unusual angles, but he's actually set and punching off a solid base a lot more than you might think. There's some smoke and mirrors with him at times, but... The fundamentals, the basics, are good. He got caught by a left hand there, as they would have to be for somebody who's got to the level that he's got to. Maybe a little clash of heads on the inside there. Umaha just had a quick check of that nose. I think it's fair to say he doesn't have the ideal boxer's nose, Sofian Umaha. Reminds us of a, an old colleague of ours, Carl Frotch in appearance from back in the day into the final 20 seconds and he's on his way to a second world championship gold here four years apart triumphed in Hamburg in 2017 and he's going to do exactly the same in 2021 in Belgrade both times in the 60 kilo category he raises the glove there, big smile on his face. That is what he came here for. He came here for the gold medal. He would have been one of the favourites from the beginning, Ron, because of his pedigree and because he was back down at 60 rather than up at 63, which he was during the Olympics. And he's delivered on it. He most certainly has, and he delivered very impressively as well. But let's give credit to Abdul Malik Halokov in his first world championships, the man from Tashkent. Brilliant series of displays. And remember, in two years' time, the World Championships will be in his home city. He's going to be considerably better by that point. But today belongs to the man who is shedding tears of joy, Sofyan Umaha, after that silver medal in the Olympic Games where he lost to Roberto Conceicao, went on the following year to claim global success, and then Kishon Davis proved to have his number accounting for him in Yekaterinburg and in the Olympic Games, as Andy said, up at 63 kilograms. But here in Belgrade, he's got it right, and he's on top of the world once again. A very good performance, and this confirmation, well, one wonders what reaction is going to bring. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming in three, three minute rounds in a lightweight matchup. All your judges have ruled in favor of your winner by points, declared by unanimous decision. To the blue corner, from France, it's the Well, there come the tears for Umaha, and it's, it's very much understandable. He's got it three rounds to nil with all five of the judges there. As you say, Holokov brought a good fight. A touch unfortunate not to get something in that opening round, certainly we thought. But rounds two and three were Umaha's. And he's just a very happy, smiley presence around the place as well. He's a really good ambassador for the sport of boxing and for his country and his community. And the kind of fighter that, I don't know, secretly you do sort of pull for a bit because he just does everything the right way. And we talk a lot about integrity in this sport. We talk a lot about code and kind of honour amongst fighters and what a brotherhood it is. And he's a very, very popular athlete within the IEBA boxing world. And he's now a two-time world champion. Not many people can say that. And it's just that lightning one, too, that, that really is his trademark. He throws that lead left, followed by the right hand, and they almost land at the same time. They're so close together. So that's three fights down in today's 
finals. There's 13 in total, of course. Seven of them are today. And so far, we've had gold medals for three different countries, Kazakhstan, Japan, and France. And Japan will now get their opportunity to pick up their second. USA will be looking to get their first. The USA have had a very, very successful competition so far, getting four fighters.